The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101. We're so happy you joined us this week. Over the next hour, you'll learn the tips, tricks, and vital information that will help you keep yourself confident and safe. Now, here's your host, Susan Bartlestone. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101, the personal safety radio show with an optimistic perspective on a sober subject. I'm your host, Susan Bartlestone, and yes, I'm so glad you've joined me today, and I hope you had a safe week since we were together last. And I also want to wish you happy pre-Valentine's Day, because it's almost the big V day. And you know what that means? That means that most of us are turning our thoughts to love, (laughs) or if single, to the search for love. So my main topic for today's show is how to search for love safely, and particularly if you're doing it online. We're going to be talking about how to avoid online dating nightmares and prevent relationship horror stories. And I've got two special guests to help me talk about this topic. I'll be speaking with Helene Fuchs, author of Sex, Lies, and the Internet, who became an expert by jumping into the online dating game at age 60. And she's now married to a man that she met online and wrote this hilarious book about her experiences. And she's got great tips on how to stay safe if you're dating online. And then I'm going to introduce you to Jeff Arndt from safecheckin.com and guide to safedating.com. And you're, if you're out there dating, you're really going to want to know about Safe Check-In because this is a, a service that monitors you when you're absent until you check in with them. And it's just like having someone at home waiting for your return. And extra special tonight, we're coming to you live. So I'm inviting you to call in and tell your dating stories if you care to or ask questions. And the call-in number is 866-472-5787. But to start us off tonight, I have a very special guest with me. My longtime self-defense teacher, Matt Temkin, who's also an internationally recognized firearms expert. And Matt just released, he just released a brand new DVD for Paladin Press, and it's called Shoot Him to the Ground, Tactical Point Shooting for the 21st Century. And I want him to tell you all about it. Very excited for him. Uh, Just a quick heads up before I introduce you to Matt. February is National Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month, but let's make the effort extend the whole year because dating violence and, and, and abuse among teenagers is really epidemic. Some good resources for you, loveisrespect.org, teendatingviolence, teendvmonth.org. Second one. I'm going to post these on my Voice America homepage and on my blog, Crime Prevention 101, too, if you didn't catch it. All right. I want to introduce you to Matt Temkin. Matt has studied World War II combatives, which is the special forces approach to armed and unarmed combat uh, pretty much all his life, literally, because his father was a member of the famed World War II Derby Rangers and started training him from childhood. He was also taught by and formed a really close personal relationship with the legendary Colonel Rex Applegate, who's considered the foremost American expert in this style of fighting. And there were many other uh, great teachers that he trained with, too. And over the years, Matt has taught these skills to thousands of law enforcement officers, members of the military, martial artists, and plain old folks alike. I have been his grasshopper, and that means student for more than 25 years. 
And anyone who knows me knows about Matt Temkin and the profound effect that he's had on my life and my career. Hey, Matty, welcome to Crime Prevention 101. Well, thank you. That's quite an uh, opening. Thank you. And I meant every word of it, my dear. All right. Let's talk a little bit about World War Combatants for people who don't know. And it, I just want to mention it's also called Close Quarters Combat and Close Quarters Shooting. So what is it, Maddie? Well, the uh, unarmed skills were designed uh, in World War II, first for the British commandos, then for other infantry troops, shock troops. But it was also designed to teach spies for the uh, OSS and the British SOE. And most of these spies were being uh, trained, not so much for fighting, but for certain skills they had, either intelligence skills, communication skills, uh, language skills, and they were being inserted into Nazi-occupied Europe. So they weren't really trained for combat, but they needed something, something quick that could be uh, learned uh, fast. And the basic uh, skills of self-defense and some, some very basic, simple skills of combat shooting were taught to them in just a couple of hours. And uh, in some cases, it was actually used. Uh, some people, uh, most of them didn't come back. Some of mm. them did, and they, and they did report that uh, it worked. It's simple. Uh, the, the application for the average person now, be they law enforcement or not, is that you don't want to train every day for years to learn effective self-defense. You want something that was designed to be learned uh, very quickly, and this system is uh, a fairly good one. And that's what one of the things that makes it different from other styles of fighting, right, like martial arts, for example. You well, can learn it quick. Yeah, I mean, when I teach police seminars in, in uh, point shooting, which is shooting without the sights, we cover a lot of uh, stuff in about four hours, but these are mainly expert shooters already. They're mainly SWAT, time, uh, SWAT team personnel, and they're fairly advanced shooters. But uh, you can learn this stuff uh, in just a couple of hours, maybe a long weekend. It doesn't take much. And that's, that's a pretty typical seminar for you, actually, is like a good long weekend seminar. Yeah. So, uh, shooting takes about a day, then we add hand-to-hand -hand combat for uh, maybe one day, and then we do a couple of hours combining these skills in uh, role-playing with uh, uh, what's called airsoft guns, which are guns which look real, but they shoot uh, uh, plastic pellets. Mm -hmm. Good, because we don't want to kill our, our, our students, right? Hopefully not. Hopefully not, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so this World War II combatives, is, it's, it embraces hand-to-hand -hand combat as well as shooting. Now, your new DVD, Shoot Him to the Ground, one of the things that, that um, struck me so important, you state that most gunfights involving an armed civilian occur within the range of zero to three feet. And Now, why is this significant? Well, most shooting schools, most police shooting systems, are based on target shooting, which means that it's mainly two hands, uh, aim fire skills, and the distances that uh, they use uh, for the max. For example, the, the NYPD goes out to about 25 yards. My job in the okay. courts, we go out to like 15 yards. When they say close range, they're talking about three yards. And that's not where most gunfights happen. Most police gunfights happen within seven feet. Most officers who are killed are killed from zero to five feet. So most people practice at fairly long distances, but when things actually happen, they happen very, very close, and the methods being sh uh, taught don't really uh, adapt themselves to what actually happens. That's why this, this system is, is teaching you what... <laughs> Basing on basing what's really happening in these fights. Now, this is called point shooting, and how is point shooting uh, different from aim and fire shooting? Well, what what we call point shooting means you're looking at the threat. 
you're looking at the person who's trying to uh, kill you, basically, which is what you would do uh, fighting on arms. It's, it's the same concept. And it doesn't take much training to be able to direct your bullets by just looking at the spot you want to hit, which is a fairly natural instinct. People tend to, to look at the things that are trying to hurt them or that they're trying to, uh, to a stop. So it's, uh, it's simple. It's based, it's based on the, uh, the concept that uh, anybody can point their finger at an object with uh, fairly good uh, accuracy. And hit it. And you don't have to sight through, which is what the way most people are taught, to take aim through the sight, fire. You don't have to do that. You point your finger at the target, and you've got a really good chance of hitting it. Well, what you're doing, what, what, what the World War II system really did was uh, they took, they understood what happens to the uh, uh, body under stress mainly under the stress of life or death combat. And certain things do happen. And what they did was that they adopted the system to use those things that happen to your advantage. So rather than trying to, to fight these instincts, the system uh, actually embraces these instincts and bases the technique on what actually happens under stress. It's it's the real deal. So, but you do say that you need to learn both. You need to learn sighted fire, and you also need to learn how to point and shoot. And then well, you yeah, I mean, uh, I consider point shooting to be a semi-advanced skill, meaning when a person first learns how to fire a gun, especially if they never fired one before, they have to learn how the gun operates. They have to learn the parts of the gun, the basic grip how to shoot, to control sights, and, and, and that's all part of, of, of basic training. Then after that, they should learn more combat uh, techniques. But there are times when uh, someone may have to take a long shot, mainly not so much, not so much us, but uh, police officers. Police officers. take a shot right. at 10 or 15 yards from behind cover, and they should you know, learn... Uh, using the sights. So basically, you should learn both, and then uh, your body will decide which technique should be used. Right. Well, this is, a, this is really an awesome, it was an awesome video, and I'm so glad to have you on to talk with me about it. If people want to buy this DVD, where do they get it? They can go to paladinpress.com, or they can go to uh, Amazon, which has some for sale. I believe the website for Paladin is, is paladin-press.com. Or just, or just put in a search for a Paladin, P-A-L-A-D-I-N Press, and uh, it'll come up, and the title of the DVD is Shoot Them to the Ground, which was not my uh, first title, by the way. That was picked by the publisher. I have ah. something a, a little less intense in mind. Well, it's definitely an intense title. If people want to get in touch with you, Manny, how can they do that if they're interested in getting some training? With my you. email address would be my name backwards. It's Temkin Matthew. That's T E M K I N M A T T H E W at yahoo.com. All right. Great. Maddie, thank you so much. Make sure you check out powerandimpress.com. Shoot them to the ground. All right. What do I need from you right now? I need you to stay tuned because when we come back, we'll be talking about dating safety. Tips, tricks, and resources. News. News. Opinion. Your voice counts. Call toll-free 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. VoiceAmerica.com. 
After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.crime prevention101.com for more information. The violent crime rate has begun to rise again. So what's more important than feeling at ease and secure in your daily life? With an optimistic perspective on a sober subject, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone brings you the information, tips, resources, and inspiring success stories that will reduce your fear and restore your confidence. So stay tuned and stay safe with Crime Prevention 101 and Susan Bartlestone every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific, here on Voice America. It'd be a crime not to listen. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio. VoiceAmerica.com You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Susan would like to remind you that no absolutes exist in a crime scenario and no advice can possibly address every variable. Each situation should be evaluated individually and responded to in a way you instinctively judge best. It's Susan's aim on this show to provide you with the information and options that will help you make that instinctive assessment quickly and safely. And if you're already a survivor of the kind of crime we're talking about on the show today, or any other crime for that matter, please remember that there are no right or wrong responses in a criminal encounter, and nothing that happened to you was your fault. Even if you think you used bad judgment in a situation and left yourself vulnerable, that's never an excuse for a crime or for violence. So please, call yourself a survivor, not a victim, and understand that with time, distance, and the proper professional help, you can put what happened into perspective and get on with your life. If you'd like to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, send your comments to solutions at fightsafe.com and Susan may address some of them on future shows. That email address again, solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101. Hi, we're back. You know, this is going to be a really good show tonight, so if you know someone who should be listening who might not be, why not send out a text message about us, start tweeting if you're on Twitter, whatever, so that they can join us too. You really want people to hear this show tonight. And don't forget that you can follow me on Twitter and on Facebook too, and I would really love to have you as a friend. Now, I want to introduce you to my next guest, Helene Fuchs. Helene was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, which is not so far from me, and for 30 years had a pretty typical life. She worked for the telephone company for three decades. She married her first husband, Art, in 1968 and lived happily until he passed away from leukemia 30 years later in in, uh, 2000 at the age of 60. At the age of 60, she started searching for a companion via the Internet and met her second husband online, and she's now been married for seven years. She wrote about all her experiences in her book called Sex, Lies, and the Internet, 32 of her experiences, I should say, most of which are really, really funny, and some, she told me, are kind of sad. And we're going to talk about this book. So, Helene, welcome to Crime Prevention 101. Oh, thank you for having me, Susan. It's my pleasure. And... It's my pleasure to have you, too, because I think it's very brave of you at the age of 60, after being married for 30 years, to not only start dating again, but to to start on the Internet. What what made you turn to the Internet for dates? Well, I I started out looking in um, the places that I knew when I was younger, Um, I went to a couple of these um, little bars and stuff, and and I realized I was too old for that, and okay. um, I wasn't finding anybody, and um, it was just a pickup joint, and I wanted more than that. And um, you, at that time, even... I didn't even know how to use a computer, so I had to go out and buy one and learn it. 
Where, and, where um, do you even find bars for 60-year-olds? I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't even know any. It's, um, it, it, it was difficult, and, and then when I got the hang of it, believe me, I was having a lot of fun. Oh, uh, okay. I did go on uh, several dating sites. Uh, you put your profile on, which is extremely hard to do because it's hard to talk about yourself and what you are and what you want. And um, and then it started. Um, emails, uh, flirts, it, um, it just goes little by little, and then you really start to enjoy yourself, even though you think, and, and it's not as frightening as you think unless you make it frightening. Okay, now you're going to have to explain that. Okay, you, you make it frightening if you don't do things your way. If somebody wants you to meet them after dark in some place you don't want to know, that would be frightening. Uh-huh. So okay. you turn it around and you have them meet on your turf during the day at your time. This okay. makes it much easier on yourself. There's a whole bunch of tips that you gave me, and let's let's save those for a little further along. We're going to go over those so that people can have good experiences, you know, or as good as possible. Let's let's go back a little bit to, um, I mean, on the on the blurb uh, for your book, it says that you were looking for more than rocking chair companionship for your old age. Right. So what what were you looking for? I was looking you don't for sound somebody. like someone to sit in the rocking chair. After no that. way. Yeah. I wanted somebody who, um, I wanted somebody with a sense of humor. I wanted right. somebody that would, would, would enjoy laughing with me. I wanted somebody who would go to a dance with me. I wanted somebody, I wanted somebody to have a meal with and not sit by myself all the time. And I wanted good conversation. If if they weren't, if I didn't meet anybody that could put words together, then that was the first and last time I would meet them. Mm-hmm. I, I had very high standards, and I think that's what we have to do. We have to say, I, I, I based a lot on... This is this might be terrible to admit, but um, a lot of times, most of the time, you would meet somebody online, and they would be writing a letter to you. Okay. And if there were a whole lot of misspellings due to them not knowing the language, you, <laughs> it sounds terrible. I, I I felt that they weren't intelligent enough because I'm a a fairly intelligent woman. I'm not a brilliant woman, but I like to have a good conversation. And if you can't have a good conversation, then, then it's, it's, it's nothing to me. And I think no woman should, should, should lower herself to that. Yeah. It's like a job interview. If you have a misspelling, Hmm? it's like a job interview in a way, because if you've got any typos or misspellings on there, but, but you have uh, to realize that, that somebody is also doing that to you. True. Somebody is, is reading your email, and you want to be intelligent, and they, sometimes you can say just by what they write is what they're interested in. So the first thing I learned on the computer was how to block somebody. Okay. <laughs> Good <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, and this is very important because uh-huh. when, when you do meet somebody and, and they get a little persistent or they feel that they really want to meet you and you don't want to, you will be inundated with emails or if you were foolish enough to give out your instant message, that, then that's what's going to happen. So you have to learn to say no thank you, but if they won't take no for an answer, then you have to learn to block that person. Okay, because it turns into harassment of a kind, which is which is one of the things that we're going to be talking about because we don't right. want that. Yeah, uh, uh, talk about some. Talk about a couple of the good experiences. And there was one bad experience you told me about. 
about someone who kept groping you. We'll talk about that. But talk about just one one experience that that really stood out in your mind up to the point before you met your present husband. Okay. Um, I went out. I went out with this one gentleman for for a few months, and um, and he was completely. He was a very nice man. He was, um, I was 61 at the time. He was 72. Um, and, um, he seemed a very nice man. He was very kind, very gentle. We went out for dinner a few times. And then I found out that he, um, he had his grown son living at home. And, and that was not a problem. Except his grown son was afraid that I would take his home away from him. And it mm. started all kinds of, Fights and harassments from the from the son. Oh gosh! Yeah, because here is a fellow who's um, forty eight years old. He is not married. He he had a long pigtail in the back. He was hardly he never worked. His father had to clean the house while he sat around. And um, this fellow w- was thinking of getting very serious with me, and I, I thought there would be something there, but um, there's just so much you can take when, when you're dealing with a 48-year-old man who thinks you're going to steal away his home and he'll have to leave, you know. So it, there were a lot yeah, of this was, strange <laughs> things. That, yeah, um, this There were funny a ones, breaker. too. Um, I met a man who was online all the time. We wanted to meet. We wanted to meet, and we had very nice conversations on the phone. And he asked me this question, which I thought was rather weird. He said, "Do you have extremely thick hair?" And I said, "No, I don't." So he hung up, and I never heard from him again. <laughs> so I knew what he wanted. Listen, I don't I, know I, what he wanted. I mean, I I know there was a cousin it on the Adams family, so I don't know <laughs> if this is what he was looking for. But obviously, it wasn't me. So some years ago, Helena, I have to tell you this story. I haven't told this in a while. I went to one of these singles things. Yeah. Uh, I'm, and uh, this was a, quite a number of years ago, and I noticed this man, and he was kind of attractive, walking around, and he was talking to everybody. It looked like, and he'd talk to them for a few minutes, and then he'd walk. He'd walk on, and then he'd talk to someone else. And finally, he made his way to me, and he's talking to me, and he seemed very nice, and he seemed very interesting. And then he goes, um, by the way, do you like to be spanked? And um, I said, well, no, not really. And if you know me at all, you know that this is a ridiculous thing to ask me. <laughs> and he said, okay, thanks. And he, <laughs> he turned and walked away, and... And uh, but I have to tell you, he left with somebody. Oh, jeez! Because I kept my eye on him. He found someone. That's called screening. He Absolutely. All right, Helene, we're coming up to. Uh, we're we're going to take a quick pause. Stay with me. We got more to talk about. Some tips. Sex lies on the internet. We're going to be right back, and you're, we're going to talk more with Helene. You're going to meet Jeff Arndt from Safe Check In. More stories, tips, resources. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.crime. Prevention101.com for more information. Let's sing that new song. My music track, track, track from a modem jack, jack, jack plays MP3s, 3s. 
threes and I download fast, fast, fast. I read the bits, bits, bits on the microchips, chips, chips, and I burnt, burnt, burnt all my favorite hits, hits, hits. By the sixth grade, many girls lose interest in technology, but parents can help keep them updated. Go to girlsgotech.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Girl Scouts of USA and Ad Council. The violent crime rate has begun to rise again. So what's more important than feeling at ease and secure in your daily life? With an optimistic perspective on a sober subject, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone brings you the information, tips, resources, and inspiring success stories that will reduce your fear and restore your confidence. So stay tuned and stay safe with Crime Prevention 101 and Susan Bartlestone every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific, here on Voice America. It'd be a crime not to listen. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Hello again. I've been talking with Helene Fuchs, the author of Sex, Lies, and the Internet, and uh, I'm just going to run over some of the tips that uh, she's got for keeping the dating experience safe, and I'm going to introduce you then to Jeff Arndt from Safe Check-In. Helene, you wrote a couple of things to me. Now, you already talked about you always made a, you made the appointments. You picked the place where to meet. You picked for a daylight, a restaurant where you knew. What, what else are some of the things you did? keep your experiences safe? Um, um, uh, always know where you are and how to get home. Always carry your cell phone with you. Always Charged. let somebody close to you know where you are. Always be safe. Never be desperate. Never jump into anything too quickly. Um, I learned that very carefully. And I also never parked my car close to where the meeting place was. And then I always let the person that I was meeting leave first, therefore knowing that I would not be followed. Okay. Very good. Um, And I know that you uh, you also mentioned that uh, you, you, you never, you know, you wouldn't, Meet someone from Craigslist uh, at a motel or something. Absolutely that was not. not. And that's what gets a lot of people in trouble. Always, always make sure that you know where the place is and, peop- and either some place that you know very well and that people know you there. So you even have people that are on the premises where you're meeting that will keep an eye on you. All you right, can even ask a manager of a restaurant. Mm-hmm. To keep I an like eye on idea. you. They will be glad to do that for you. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. Now, Helene, where can people get Sex Lies in the Internet? You can get it uh, at um, my publisher, uh, kirkhouse.com, K-I-R-K-H-O-U-S-E.com. You can get it at barnesandnoble.com. It's on amazon.com. And... Um, you can also see it on a, a special website that I'm working on with um, two people from the United Kingdom. It's a website called Love Store, L-O-V-E-S-T-O-R-E, the number four and the letter U. And in that, in that um, site, it gives you tips on safety and it gives you tips on dating and it also gives you dating sites. And this is for... Uh, for the United States and for Europe. Okay, great. That's Love Store, the number four, the letter U. U. Yeah, lovestoreforyou.com. Right. Now, Helene, one of the things that we talked about, you mentioned quickly, did you always let at least two people know where you were going and when you would be back? And that lets me introduce my next guest. This is kind of what he does on his website. So I want you to meet Jeff Arns. And Jeff, 
this is the second time you've been with me because I, the service that you provide is such an important one, you know, and especially since we're talking about dating sites because it's got many other uses besides dating. Hi, Jeff. So welcome back. Well, and wonderful to be back, and good evening to both of you. Oh, good evening, Jeff. Now, Jeff, talk about safe check-in and how does it work? Well, safe check-in is essentially designed as a safety net, a backup to, you know, um, your, your guests have mentioned the cell phone, the self-defense um, techniques and that type of thing. But there's often times where many of us are living alone. We're, we're, we're out in a new city. We're away from friends, relatives, and that type of thing. And we don't really have somebody that, that notices when we may, may go missing. So when we're going out sometimes, there's nobody out there that finds out whether or not we came back safe or not. And that's what the safe check-in is all about, is that you can check out, you tell us, what you're going to be doing, what you're wearing, what you're driving, where you're going, when you're leaving, when you expect to come back. And we monitor that up until the time that you check safely back in. And if you don't check back in, somebody is out there looking for you. Now, this, now this is a this is a, a website, safechecking.com, that you can join, correct? Yes. And, and it's totally private. What we do is you join and you put basic information about yourself. Um, we have a picture. We have your physical description. We have your information about what you drive, the type of activities that you do, any medical conditions that you have. And then when you decide that you want to check out, you create what we call an event. And that event essentially is that you're checking out saying, I am going to be going to meet Matt at such and such a place, and this is where I met him, and this is what the information I have about him, this is what I'm wearing, that type of thing, and then um, when do you expect to come back? And so that event stays there and is, stays open up until the time that you check back in safely. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? It's That's great. Helena, yeah. Helene had two friends that she would call, but not all of us have two friends you know, to monitor when you're coming back, right, Helene? That's a, that's Absolutely. Would been, that would have been would wonderful. Have, if I was alone, I didn't have friends, that would be ideal. Well, if you have a roommate, you know, your roommate's going to know if you're, if you, where you're going to go and when you can come back safely and that type of thing. Somebody will notice. If you're living with your parents or friends or something like that, coworkers, things like that, you, could, you do have that, that network, so to speak, that, that safety net that m many right. people do have. But then again, many of us don't have that. And so nobody's out there necessarily waiting for us to come back home. And that's actually, that, that it came up on a personal level. I was on a chairlift, it was in the middle of a snowstorm, and I thought, you know, if I fell off this thing, nobody would find me till spring, and nobody even knows I'm even here. Right. And... Then I decided that, you know, I looked at all the different possibilities of uses of this service, and dating, sa dating safety is something that's rather near and dear to my heart because I, I, I've been involved in a lot of different safety websites and everything. And I thought that this was a perfect complement to that. Yeah, so I just want to mention that too, Jeff. This is not just for dating. If you're going out on a hike, if you're going out on a, on a business call, you know, whatever whatever it is where where you feel you want someone to know in case you don't come back, you can use safe check-in. And, and what happens if the person doesn't check? Let's say I, I would say, I think I'm going to be back by 11 o'clock. What happens if I don't check in? Well, in your profile, you've given us up to three emergency contact information of people, uh, whether it be your mother, your parents, a friend, a roommate, that type of thing, people that you want us to first start contacting and say, Betty was supposed to show up at this particular time, this is what she was supposed to do, and she is overdue and we cannot contact her. So what our job then is, is if once we cannot find you, in other words, we try to contact you because we don't want false alarms, of course, mm -hmm. and people do forget to check back in. It's an unfortunate mm -hmm. fact that, you know, out of, out of sight, out of mind. But if we can't contact you, then we go to the first person on your contact list, and our job is to inform that person and make sure that they accept responsibility and then we'll take action. Okay. And do you ever call the police? Now, that's another issue. We have a number of members, uh, actually it's actually scary how many members we have, that are victims of domestic violence or stalker issues. Mm -hmm. And they ha there's an option in our system where the police are the first people to contact. 
and we have okay. uh, private information that says, if I don't come back, inform the police of this information, and this is, you know, this may be the individual that might be involved, or this may be the situation. Okay. Very good. Also, now, if the emergency contact requests us to contact the police, we will do that too. We can fax, we can email, we can all the information about the event and the member's profile can be sent to the police directly also. Terrific. All right. I love this. Now, you've got a, you mentioned you've got a number of websites, and one of the other websites is called GuideToSafeDating.com, which has lots of interesting information and tips. And you talk about red flags to watch out for when you're, when you're dating. You want to go, can we go over a couple of the red flags? Well, many of the red flags that, that are that what there are is, is they're fishing for personal information. They're looking for phone numbers. They want to know what's your birth date, for instance, which sounds like a very innocent question, but at the same time, this is one step towards not only identity information, uh, identity theft information, but also can be used to kind of narrow down exactly where you live and that type of thing. So you really don't want to give out a lot of personal information, at least at first. And Helene, Helene wrote this book about her online dating experiences, and that's really where you want to look out for these red flags because oh, there, there are, are there are a lot of red flags, and and Jeff mentioned a, a very important one, and, and the other one is um, when they want to meet you immediately. It, it's um, they don't want Why to get to know you; they they need to see you right this minute. You know, and, it's, it's and, exactly and that, right. That I think that when you're being anxious about something, is mm-hmm. a bad thing. Yes. Um, and uh, and conversely, if they don't want to meet, if they keep stalling meeting you, that's another one. That's a usually red flag. when they're stalling, they're waiting. They're waiting for their wives to leave the house. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a red. Flag. Oh, yeah, flag. because there are a lot, of, and I'm not just putting the blame on men. There are women, I'm sure, that do that, too. But um, I, ha- I met several men who, uh, well, I really can't give you my home phone number. Um, it's not really working. Uh, let me give you my cell phone number. And, and don't call it between this hour and this hour. Oh, please. I mean, what you're doing is telling me that, you know, your wife mm-hmm. is home, you know. And Jeff talks about that, too. He says if you call at an undesignated time or unspecified time and they get angry, red flag. Red All flag. Right. Well, you know what? Jessaline, hang out with me just a few more seconds. We're, we're going to be right back with some tips, some dating resources for you. I look forward to it. Yep, we'll be here. All right. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. Yeah! If you'd like to talk, call us toll free right now at 1 866 472 5787. 1 866 472 5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.crimeprevention.com. Prevention101.com for more information. Are you a real sports fan? Get ready to talk football and anything else sports with Kwame Lasseter, formerly with the Arizona Cardinals, San Diego Chargers, and St. Louis Rams. Kwame's got the experience, so he's prepared to talk sports with you every week on Kwame Lasseter's Sports Talk. It's on the Voice America Sports Network every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time. Get ready for unpredictable fun and sometimes a sarcastic look at the world of sports. That's Kwame Lasseter's Sports Talk on the Voice America Sports Network. Think of the world 50 years ago. Now think of this same world and how it will be 50 years from now. 
Did you know that if the world's population continues to grow at its current rate, our children and grandchildren will only have 25% of the resources per capita that our parents and grandparents had? We must preserve the foundation of a quality standard of living. That foundation starts with Go Green Radio. Join your host, Jill Buck, for Go Green Radio every Friday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Voice America. Stimulating talk it gets those synapses in the brain inspired really fast. All the time. The number one Internet talk station where your opinion counts. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Hello again. And I just want to remind you that Crime Prevention 101 is available on iTunes. You don't even have to be at your computer to listen to all this goodness. All right, well, we're talking with Helene Fuchs, the author of Sex, Lies, and the Internet, and Jeff Arndt from safecheckin.com and guide to safe dating.com. We were talking a little bit about red flags, and I want to, we'll pick that up, but one of the things that he's got, he's got another service available, and it's called VerifiedNetID.com. And talk, talk about this, because this is really important. When you're talking about red flags and getting suspicious, what is this? Well, everybody, everybody's heard about doing background checks and that type of thing, but background checks that you do on individuals sometimes have an awful lot of holes in them and everything. Plus... Um, if you're doing a background check on an individual, if let's say that I'm back, let's say that I'm talking to Mary and I want to do a background check on Mary, well, you know, I have to get certain information to do an accurate background check on her and to, to find out if she's honest and that type of thing. But doing that has a lot of pitfalls. You know, you need the, you need the social security number and the birth date and all that type of thing. But if a third party service does it and you do it on yourself, that's what a persona check is. In other words, you are doing you are allowing us persona check or excuse me verified net id the name has been changed actually now to verified mm-hmm. net id um, okay. we are the ones doing the background check on yourself and then you okay. can provide that information to whomever you want to through the third party which is verified net and in other words wow. you're talking to me and you say i'm an honest individual and I can prove that. And so what I will do is I will go into my profile and verify that ID. I will say, this is Mary's email address. This is the information I want to reveal, which nothing, nothing specific like Social Security numbers or addresses or things like that are. But everything that we've verified and all the background check information saying that this person doesn't have a criminal background, this person is, um, has had their address verified and that type of thing, we will send an email out from Verified Net ID to that individual. So it doesn't come from me. It comes from a third party that's verified this information. But you've done it on yourself. Okay, so, so you can also I, make sure that that information is accurate. If, if, if I'm uh, following Helene's lead out here and I'm, and I'm going online and I'm dating and I start to see some red flags, can I, I, you're saying what I should do is ask this person to get verified. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, if they're sincere, it's a, very, it's a very inexpensive service. They can say, you know something, not only they can be using it for Helene, but they can use it for anybody. Right. And if, for instance, so, if you're applying for an apartment, you could say, I'll send you an email showing that I've got this background information. It's one more way of establishing the fact that I'm an honest individual and I can prove it, but I don't, I'm, the information is not coming from me. It's coming from a third party that, have I, that I have asked to verify this information. But can't I lie to you about, like, why would I tell you I, I've been to, to prison? How will you find out? We do the background check based on the information that you give us because we're the ones getting the Social Security number and the birth date and the recent addresses and that type of thing. All right. So in- interesting. Good to know. If you, if, you, uh, if, if, he, if he balks at getting verified, I think that's a red flag. 
It's I, a major I, red flag, yes. I, 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 put that, I put that in the red flag column, right? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> I like it. But we don't really we don't really catch too many people at it because once they read what we do and how we do things, they don't sign up. Because we will find out. Anybody that's dishonest won't sign up. Exactly. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I can I can understand that people are a little cautious about revealing social security numbers and so forth. So if 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 you can make people comfortable about that, then I don't see any reason why uh, you know, they should book. And they'd have to give me a really, really good reason why they didn't want to do that in order for me to be, feel comfortable about it. Absolutely. Because well, I like that. The best part about and, it and is, it's is it's coming from a third party. It's not coming from you. I can say that I've got a background check that I can provide you. Well, that doesn't have a lot of credibility because mm-hmm. those can be faked. They can be uh, manipulated, that type of thing. But if it's coming from somebody independent that you've asked to say, do this on me, and then it has the credibility. Because I have to tell you, I've heard so many horror stories that if I did get involved with somebody that, you know, I, I was just, even if I didn't get red flags, I would still want that background check. I mean, it just, I'm just in this business for too long and, you know, I'm too old and I'm too, I'm too cynical <laughs> to, to say if he looks too good, he can't be. He just yeah. can't be. You know, that's just that's just sad. That would have been an interesting thing for me to have while I was dating. Very, yeah, very much so. Yes, and it's a reasonable request. It's just like saying, you know, I I think you're a wonderful person, but you know, I really would like to, for my own personal safety and my personal comfort, I would like to ask you if you could do this one small favor for me. Mm -hmm. And And if the person is sincere, they'll they'll do it. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. And, it's, and if it's it doesn't like work for you, if it doesn't test. work between you, they can continue to use it for anybody else they want to mm-hmm. because they're the ones who control who gets the information and what information they get. That's a great service. Yes. It, it really is. And it's the it's, like, it's, it's same thing like getting an AIDS test. You want them to go to your doctor or a doctor you know. You don't yeah. want to just accept any old certificate that they hand you. You want to know that it's really verified. There there are so many people out there that I have met um, over the years that um, they will even send you a picture of of their son. And then when you meet them, you have no idea who you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Or they'll send you a picture of this this handsome man, and it was 40 years ago. And it, it was him, but 40 years ago. (laughs) <laughs> there, there, was a, there was a lot of that that goes on. And a very no, oh, background check would have been wonderful had I known. Yeah. Jeff, you have a, a special offer for uh, yes, crime prevention. Going back to safe check in. Um, this is something that, you know, it, it, safe check in is very near and dear to my heart because I think this is something that's, it's, that's so valuable to so many people for so many different ways. And I want to be able to offer your listeners the opportunity to try us and try us for nothing. And what, I, what I'm offering is three months free of safecheckin.com. And all they have to do is sign up for our service and then email us at customer service or you know, at the customer service address and state that they heard about us on your radio show and we will refund the money back. Super. All right, and I'm going to Three months free. On- Twenty one ninety nine value. All you have to do is say that you heard us on the show, and you can try us out for three. Use and abuse us. It's the cheapest life insurance you can buy. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jeff. And I'm going to post uh, that information on in the show notes to the show, and on my blog site, CrimePrevention101.com. Make sure you check out uh, Safe Date Guide to Safe Dating. He's got all sorts of resources here. If you're looking for people who to play golf with, he's got datesport.com. He's got, if you're looking for people in the armed services to date, he's got a website there you can find. Um, just, just really good stuff. Sex lies in the internet. Check it out on Amazon. You know what, guys? That's a wrap for now. <laughs> and where does the time go? But never fear, because you and I are going to be doing the same thing again next week, same time, same bat channel, and I'm dating myself here when I say that. 
when I'll have more stories that demand to be told, more important crime topics for you, tips, resources. It'll be a crime not to listen, so stay tuned and stay safe. Mwah. Love you all. We hope you got some useful information and inspiration this week on Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone invites you to join us again next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific at 8 p.m. Eastern Time here on Voice America. If you want to learn more about Susan's guest, sign up for her newsletter, or find out about upcoming teleseminars and workshops, go to www.crimeprevention101.com today. Have a great week and a safe week.